Okay, today we have our dissertation on chapter uh, 29, which is about uh, the magnetic fields produced by electric currents. The major concepts we covered in the chapter were uh, using biosapphire flow to find the magnetic fields due to infinitely long straight wires and circular arcs. And then we considered the magnetic force between parallel wires. Then we discussed amperes and we saw its application to find uh, the magnetic field inside, outside a cylindrical wire, be it a solid wire or a cylindrical tube. And then we consider the solenoid, and finally we consider a current carrying coil. We did sufficient problems in the lecture on Ampere's law and its applications. We also saw a problem on the solenoid, which was quite sufficient. This is a conceptual uh, concept, so we don't really have much here. And therefore, the focus in this recitation will be on the first two concepts we had in the chapter. So let's review the Biosavart law. Biosavart law enables us to calculate the magnetic fields that are produced by electric currents. We used it to find the magnetic field due to an infinitely long straight wire, and we saw that at a point that is a distance r from the wire, the magnetic field is mu zero over two pi r, and its direction is given by the right hand rule. In the case of a circular arc, we found the magnetic field at the center of the arc, and we found it to be mu zero i phi, where phi is the central angle, divided by four pi times the radius of the arc, and its direction is again given by, this is the direction of the magnetic field, it's given by the right hand rule. Let's now look at some problems uh, on this concept. And we start here with problem 45 from the textbook. That says, in this figure, two long straight wires. So we have wires, and they come like this, one and two, okay? They are coming up to the page, perpendicular to the page, and we are just looking at the cross-section, okay? We take a cross-section, and that's what we see. So two long straight wires are perpendicular to the page and separated by distance D1, the distance between the two wires is 0 0.75 centimeters. Wire one carries 6.5 amperes into the page. You can see the direction. So for the first wire, the, go the current is going into the page. What are the magnitude and direction of the current in wire uh, two if the net magnetic field due to the two currents is zero at point P, which is located at distance D2 of 2.5 centimeters from wire two. So we have these two wires, they will produce, okay, each one of them will produce a magnetic field that goes like cylinders around the wire. And we want uh, to control the current in the second wire so that the magnetic field at this point, which note is along the line joining the two wires, we want the magnetic field at this point to be zero. So what should be the magnitude and direction of the current in this wire to have that condition? Well, let's start with what we are given. We are given wire one. Wire one uh, is a wire in which the current is going into the page, so at any point below the wire, the magnetic field will be going, for example, at point B, it will be going to the left. Now, we want the magnetic field at this point to be zero, so we must have a magnetic field pointing in the other direction and having the same magnitude as B1. Now, that second magnetic field will come from wire two. So what should be the direction of the current in wire two to give us a magnetic field in this direction. Could it be into the page? Well, if it is into the page, then at the bottom, it will be the same uh, direction as V1. So it cannot be into the page. It should be out of the page. If the current in wire two is out of the page, okay, if it is out of the page, then at any point below the wire, here is the direction of the magnetic field, Okay, there it is. It will point to the right as we want it here. So this is our first conclusion. The current 
and layer two must be out of the page. Okay? Here is our first finding. I2 must be out of the page. Now, how much is it? We equate the magnitudes of the two uh, fields. So now equate the magnitudes. We want B1 to be equal to B2. The magnetic field due to an infinitely long straight wire is a mu zero i over two pi distance from the wave. So B1 is a mu zero i one divided by two pi. What is the distance between B1, uh, between wire one and P? It's D1 plus D2. So D1 plus D2. We want that to be equal to B2, which is a mu zero I2 divided by two pi. The distance between wire two and point P is D2. So here we have D2. Now cancel mu zero, cancel the two pi, solve for I2, and you will see that I2 is equal to D2 divided by D1 plus D2 multiplied by I1. Now we have the distances. D1 is 0.75. D2 is 2.5, put them in here, multiply that by I1, which is 6.5 amperes, and that will give you the magnitude of I2, which will be 5.0 amperes. So that's the value of the current in wire 2. Now, let me add to this, okay? This is the problem in the book. Let me add this part. What is the magnetic field at the midpoint between the two wires? Here, what would be the magnet if we fix the currents like we found in there? What would be the magnetic field at the midpoint between the two wires? Well, if we are at the midpoint, okay, here is the uh, first wire. The current is going into the page, and here is the second wire. The current is coming out of the page, and we want the magnetic field at this point. So let's look at this one. The current is going into the page, so here the magnetic field is to the left. And therefore, this is the magnetic field B1 due to wire 1. What about this one? This is coming out of the page, so at this point it will be again to the left. Okay, so this will be B2. And therefore, the two magnetic fields are in the same direction, we simply add them. So, B at the middle point is B1 plus B2, and its direction is to the left. How much is this? A mu zero, I1 over two pi, and how much is the distance? Half of B1. B1 over two plus a mu zero, I2 divided by two pi, D, 1 over 2. So, cancel these twos and uh, take mu 0 over pi d1, all of that is common factor, and then i1 plus i2. So, this is 4 pi, 10 to the minus 7 divided by pi, and d1 is 0.75 centimeters, so 7.5. 10 to the minus 3 meters, and then multiplied by the sum of the currents, 6.5 plus uh, 5 is 11.5 amperes, and that will give us 0.613 millitesla as the magnetic field at the midpoint between the two wires, and its direction, as we said, will be to the left. So here is an example on the magnetic field due to infinitely long straight waves. Let's now take another example, again on the magnetic field produced by infinitely long straight waves. And that is problem five in the textbook, which says, in this figure, four long straight waves, so we have 
four wires like this one two three four we place them at the corner of the square so four long straight wires are perpendicular to the page and their cross sections form a square of edge length 40 centimeters the currents are out of the page in wires one and four here the currents are out of the page and into the page into the page in wires two and three and each wire carries 12 amperes of current in unit vector notation what is the net magnetic field at the square center well let us first figure out the directions okay remember that this point the center of the square is the same distance from all corners so we will find the distance okay but let's now figure out the directions to find the direction of the magnetic field let's do it elaborately for one of them and then you can do it repeat it for the rest of them let's find the direction of the magnetic field produced by wire one at this point to do that you draw a circle whose center is the wire and whose radius is the distance at which we want to find the magnetic field and now find out the sense of the magnetic field this is a current that is going out of the page so the magnetic field lines will go in this case counterclockwise and at any point the magnetic field is tangent to the circle so if we want the magnetic field at this point we simply draw a tangent to the circle in that sense in that direction so that is the magnetic field b1 produced by wire one in the same way you can see that that is the magnetic field produced by wire three wire three has its current going into the page so at that point its magnetic field will be in that direction the magnetic fields due to the other two wires are in this direction let's look at number four it's out of the page so at that point there it is number four number two is into the page okay into the page so just slide your hand and that will be the direction of the magnetic field p2 due to wire two so these are the directions of the magnetic fields they are grouped into in in each direction now we agree that since the distances are the same the currents are the same then the magnitudes of the four magnetic fields are equal the magnitudes are equal so what can we say about their components well you can see that their x components will cancel this will give us positive x components this will give us negative whereas their y components will add up they are all in the positive y direction so with that now let's uh, do the calculations let me first work out uh, the uh, distance here is the square and i will call the distance from the corner to the center i will call it r so this is r and this is a what do we have from theta bars two r squared is a squared plus a squared 4 r squared is 2 a squared r squared is a squared over 2 so r is equal to a over square root of 2 that's the distance from the corner to the center now let's find the magnetic fields which problem is this i think this is a problem this is problem five. Let me just double check. This is problem five, yes. And problem five. Let's put the numbers. A is 40 centimeters, and I in each one is 12 amperes. This is the information we need here. Let's put this back. Okay. So the current due to each wire, the magnetic field, sorry, due to each wire is given by the bias of our flow, let's call it Bi, the current due to one, the field due to one current is a mu zero 
i over 2 pi r. Okay, now looking at the configuration here, the x components cancel, the y components add up. So the net magnetic field at the center is equal to 4 bi, we have 4 wires, each one of them gives us a magnitude bi, and then sine 45 for the y components, and that will be in the positive y direction. So let's put the numbers. This is 4 times bi, which is mu0 i, over 2 pi, what is r? Here is r, a times square root of 2, okay? And then sine 45, root 2 over 2, and all of this, j. So, 2 root 2 square, uh, root 2 squared is 2, that will cancel this, so these will cancel, this will cancel, this will leave us with 2 in here. So let's now multiply 2 times mu 0, 4 pi, 10 to the minus 7, times i, which is 12 amperes, divided by pi, multiplied by a, which is 40 centimeters, so 0.4, and all of this is in the j direction. So putting all the numbers, uh, this will be equal to plus 24j, and the unit is microtesla, so 24 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay. And that is the answer to the problem. So here we have our second example. First example, we had two wires. In the second example, we had these four wires. Let's now look at a problem involving circular arcs, like problem 57. theta, which is 74 degrees, two circular arcs have radii A, 18.9 centimeters, and B, 10.7 centimeters, subtend, you pavel, subtend angle theta of 74 degrees, carry current I, you can see the current is passing in that direction, and its magnitude is 0.411 amperes, and share the same center of curvature, which is point P. What are the magnitude and direction into or out of the page of the net magnetic field at point P? Well, if we number the sections we have, we can see that we have four sections here, two straight sections, one, three, and two circulars, two and four. Now, the straight sections, one and three, will not contribute any magnetic field, and that's the reason we mentioned in the class for the straight ones, D, S, and R are in the same direction, so their cross product is zero, and therefore they will not produce any magnetic field at the uh, point P. So we only have to consider the circular uh, parts, which are two and four. Now for the circular part, for the circular arcs, what is the magnetic field due to a circular arc. It's mu naught i phi, in this case he calls it theta, so that is theta, divided by 4 pi r. Okay, so let's use that to find the magnetic field produced by segment 2 at point P. B due to 2 is equal to mu 0 i 
theta divided by 4 pi and the radius of that segment is d. Now, what is the direction of the magnetic field produced by this part at this point? Follow the current. The current is going in that direction in 2, so its magnetic field will be out of the page. So this is out of the page. For number 4, the magnetic field is in mu 0 i theta divided by 4 pi, its radius is A. And now what is the direction of the magnetic field? Follow the current. The current will go this way and therefore here it will be going in that direction. So in number 4, the current is going that way and therefore the magnetic field will be into the page. So this is into the page. Now, let's look at these two magnetic fields. And mu zero is the same, it's the same current, same angle, four pi is a constant, and there we have the radii. This is the smaller radius, so this will be the larger magnetic field, and vice versa. Larger radius, smaller magnetic field. So this is the larger magnetic field, and it is out of the page. They are, of course, opposite, so we have to subtract them. This is the larger one, and this is the smaller one. So the net magnetic field at point P is the larger one, B2, minus B4, and it will take the direction of the larger one, which will be out of the page. So this will be the mu zero I theta divided by four pi, and then one over B minus one over A, and it is out of the page. All that you have to do now is substitute the values I is equal to 0.411 amperes. Theta is 74 degrees. And remember again and again that this theta must be calculated in radians. So convert 74 degrees to radians and then put it here. And B and A are given in the problem. So if we put all these numbers, you will see that the uh, magnetic field, the net magnetic field at uh, point P is equal to 0 0.215, 0 0.215 micro tesla, 10 to the minus 6 tesla, and its direction is out of the page. So this is an example of a problem on circular arcs. With that, we now move into the next concept we had in chapter 29 which is the magnetic force between parallel wires. We said if we have two parallel wires carrying currents, there will be a magnetic force between them. They exert magnetic forces on each other, and the magnetic force on each one of them is given by this equation here, mu zero L, the length, I A, I B, the currents passing in them, divided by two pi times the distance between the two currents. If the currents are in the same direction, then this is an attractive force. If they are opposite in directions, then it will be a repulsive force. Let's now look at some problems here, and we start with problem 11 in the textbook. Uh, problem 11 says the following. Let me draw things here, so then we can follow the problem. Problem 11 says, in this figure, five long, okay, we have five wires going this way, one, two, three, four, five, 
five long parallel wires in an XY plane are separated by distance D, the, the, the distance between adjacent wires D is half a meter, 50 centimeters. The currents into the page are I1 is into the page. You can see that. And its value is 2 amperes. Uh, okay, let's put the values here. This is 2 amperes. Okay. And current I3 is also into the page. It has a value 0 0.25. 0 0.25 amperes. And current I4 is into the page. Its value is 6 amperes. And current 5 is also into the page, it has a value of 2 amperes. Only one current is out of the page. Okay, and that is the current I2. Okay. The current out of the page is I2. And its value is 4 amperes. So here is this one. What is the magnitude of the net force per unit link, net force per unit link, acting on wire number three due to the currents in the other wires. So we only want to find the net force on this one. Of course, there will be four forces acting on it. We have four wires, so they will produce four forces on this one. We want to find the net force. Well, that's to fall. The force between two wires is mu zero, uh, L I1 I2, or I A I B, divided by two pi D. The force per unit link, I will represent it by small f. This is what he is looking for, is the force per unit link. So you divide by L. What you are left with is mu zero I A I B, divided by two pi D. So forget about the link, okay? Now we want to focus on this one. So let's draw it here and show the forces acting on it. Okay, let's first find the directions. What is the direction of the force on three due to one? They are both into the page in the same direction, so it will be an attractive force. And this is the direction of the force F31. Then 3 and 2, they are opposite in directions, so it will be a repulsive force, and that will be the direction of the force F32. F32. Now let's look at 3 and 4. Same direction, it is an attractive force, so it will try to pull 3 toward 4. And this will be the direction of the force F3, 4. Finally, between 3 and 5, okay, again they are in the same direction, so it will be an attractive force. It will try to pull 3 toward 5, and therefore this is the direction of the force F3, 5. So three forces in one direction, one force in the opposite direction. Now find their magnitudes and add them uh, vectorially. So let's find first the magnitudes of uh, uh, these, these forces. F31. is equal to a mu zero, I3, I1, I3 is 0.25, I1 is 2, divided by 2 pi, and the distance is between 3 and 1, D and D, 2D. This is equal to the mu 0 over pi D. I will take this as a common value for all of them, and everything else multiply. So multiply the currents, divided by these twos, and what you have is 0.125. F32 is mu zero, I3, I2, divided by between two and three, the distance is D, so two pi 
P. Again, take mu zero pi P out and multiply everything else. If you do so, here is what you have, pi D, and this will be equal to 0.5. If three, four is a mu zero, I three, I four, divided by two pi, the distance between three and four is just P. So again, multiply I three, I four, divided by two, and whatever you have is multiplied by pi zero over pi d, and that would be 0.75. And finally, f three pi is a mu zero, i three, i five, divided by two pi, and then the distance is two d. So this is equal to a mu zero over pi d, multiplied by 0.125 and these are the magnitudes now let's look at what we have here okay where is the different force the different force is f31 now is there any one of these three that passes this one here are the remaining three is there any one of them that is equal to 0.125 and the answer is yes, this one. So look at F31 and F35. F31, F35. Opposite in direction, equal in magnitude. So our conclusion is F31 cancels F35. And that will leave us with only these two. Okay, these two will be in the same direction in the positive y. Look at the, 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 the titles of the axis. This is called the y axis now. So we have two forces, add them, and they will be in the uh, y direction. So what we have F3 net, F3 net is the sum of these two, F32 plus F34 in the positive y direction. Now, how much is this? 0.5 plus 0.75 is 1.25. 1.25 times mu 0, 4 pi, 10 to the minus 7, divided by pi, multiplied by the distance d, half a, half a meter, 0.5, okay? Now we can cancel that. That would be eight times that one, and that would be one point zero. So this is in the j direction, and this is equal to one point zero j. This whole thing is one ten to the minus six. So one point zero micro newton micro comes from the ten to the minus six. Remember that this is force per unit length, so it's unit is newton per meter but now micro newton per meter and that would be the correct description of uh, this force here we will conclude with uh, one more problem on forces between parallel wires and that one now is uh, problem number eight in the textbook Problem 8 says, in the figure below, four long straight wires are perpendicular to the page. Again, they go like this. We are looking at their cross sections. And their cross sections form a square of edge length A that is equal to 7 centimeters. Each wire carries 15 amperes, and all the currents are out of the page. So they are all in the same direction. They are all out of the page. In unit vector notation, what is the net magnetic force per meter, again, force per unit length, uh, on wire number one? What is the net force acting on wire number one? Well, let us first find out the directions. They are all in the same direction. So here we have two parallel currents. The force will be an attractive force. 
So that would be a force we want you to do, pulling it that way. That is a force pulling it toward four. That is a force attracting it toward three. So we have three forces that look like this. These are the directions. Now, find the magnitudes of these forces, resolve like this one that needs to be resolved, and then uh, add them vectorially. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let us first work out the geometry. Here is the geometry, okay? And what they want to find here is the diagonal of the square, let me call it that, which is the distance between one and three. This is A, and this is A, so R squared is 2A squared, and therefore R is root 2 into A. Okay. Let me first calculate F13 because that's the difficult force. <coughs> and I will talk about F, small f, which is the force per unit length. So we are dividing by the length. This is equal to mu0, i squared, i1, i3 are the same. They are all 15 of these, so this is just i squared, divided by 2 pi r. Okay? And let me put that in terms of a and u0 i squared divided by 2 pi and then root 2 a. What is the x component of this? Okay, the x component of that. Uh, that would be f13 cosine 45 because it is a square, the angle is 45. So this is equal to mu0 i squared over 2 pi root 2 a multiplied by root 2 over 2. Okay, <clears throat> this will cancel and I have a mu 0 i squared over <coughs> mu 0 i squared over 4 pi, 4 pi a. And if you repeat the same thing for the x component, it will be the same because sine 45 is equal to cosine 45, so this is indeed also F13Y. So, the net X component, now let me say net force on wire number one. It has an X component, which is equal to F12 plus the X component of F13. That is a mu zero i squared over two pi, the distance between one and two is a, and then this mu zero i squared over four pi a. What do we have here? We have one half plus one quarter, that is three quarters. So three a mu zero i squared over four pi a. Put the numbers. 3, 4, 5, 10 to the minus 7 times i is 15, square root 225, divided by 4 pi, multiplied by a, a is 7 centimeters, so 0 0.07. Okay, multiply the numbers here and you will find that this is equal to 9.64 times 10 to the minus 4 Newton per meter. Repeating the same thing for the Y component, it will be F14 plus F13Y and it will be exactly the same numbers. So you will again get this number here, 9.64 times 10 to the minus four Newton per meter. So now in unit vector notation, the net force on wire number one 
okay the x component is positive the y component is negative so it will be 9.64 for the x minus 9.64 for the y both multiplied okay let me put the unit vectors this is i and this is j and both multiplied by 10 to the minus 4 newton per meter so there we have the force written in unit vectorization and this brings us to uh, the end of the problems we have on chapter 29